If you just join us, we got a good show tonight. We have Dr. Paul Ehrlich, Kelly Garrett, Tom Snyder, and this gal, who's a fine actress and a great sense of humor, Suzanne Pluchette, and it's hard to believe she is going to start her sixth season on the Bob Newhart, Barb, <laughs> I haven't been gone long, on the Barb Newhart, on the Bob Newhart show, plays his wife, Emily, of course. Would you welcome Suzanne Pluchette? <laughs> better than we did last week, don't we? Yeah, well, <laughs> you said it before I did. Last time we saw each other. We're also good friends. You know, sometimes it's it's more difficult having real good friends on the show sure. than people that you're not too familiar with. I think we ought to have a fight. Yeah. Which, <laughs> what happened last week, we were watching a movie together, and your manager, Bud Robinson, was also with us. <laughs> Bud had had an, a recent operation. You had your arm in a sling because you had fallen off a ladder. Yeah, in the kitchen, which is not my room. I've told you that, John. That's what they say. Most accidents happen in the home, and you had sprained it so I, I fell off the ladder and whacked my arm first and then my ribs, so the ribs were taped, and the arm was in a sling. And she walked in, and I had that dumb-looking <laughs> large cervical collar, you know, that people wear so that, you, you know, you look like Shields and Yarnell all the time doing this. <laughs> And, and what we, about the kid with the, uh, the two and arms? one of Timmy's friends, our son, ben, his name is Ben, had fallen out of a car the week before and had broken one arm and had both arms in a cast. So out of six people, four of us were sitting there like this. <laughs> it looked like a home. And I, you know, I'm very demonstrative. So it was very hard because trying to hug you and Johnny was like, like yeah. this. He was and I had, say hello. Don't squeeze me, yeah. don't squeeze me. And he keeps making me laugh, and that hurt. So there was no, no touching. But you kind of had a Cary Grant turn, you know, when your neck was like that. You know, he always turns like that in movies. There's a certain debonair thing, you know, oh, when somebody I've says hello, and you go, that. yeah. <laughs> you know, Very debonair. Whole body. How are you feeling now? Oh, I you? feel great. I feel, you know, it's a drag to be home. How did you fall off the ladder in the first place? Well, this is tragic. Um, you read this first all of all, the time. You know, I haven't been in the kitchen in five and a half years. You are not. Cook. You are not no. uh, Betty Crocker. I wanted to turn it into a closet and just build nice little shelves and you know a couple of racks. Tommy felt that that was out of line in case we ever wanted to rent the apartment. To Tommy once told me if you ever wanted to hide anything, he was going to hide it in a room where That's you never. Right. That was the kitchen. That was he it. said that it would always be safe. <laughs> I went in there to get something off of a shelf. Mm -hmm. I'm one of those little ladders, you know, with the plastic seat. And I hate to admit this, but I wear those little knitted. Booties with the pom pom on top. You're putting me up. And the phone rang, and you know me, God forbid I should miss a phone call. There may be some dish in Beverly Hills. I went to turn to get it and lost my, you know, you can't get a grip in those booties, and I just went over on my cam. Calling Tommy at the office and trying to be in control and saying, what, 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 and on my voice, you know, which is usually. You're hurting. What, 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 would you please come? I thought I'd broken my arm, and they had to take me to the doctor and take me up. But, to stay home when you're a kid, you know, and you pretend you have a stomach ache in their school is great. very exciting. Oh. But to stay home like you when you oh. can't move is awful. Now, I started watching soap operas, and I started to call John every day because I watched this. If you don't watch it all the time, you don't know what's going on. And I said to him, have you been watching? I think it was the doctors. He said, no. Why? I said, a lady walked in. She said to a guy, Don and Joyce are going to Geneva, and Vonda and Tom are going to move in the house because since he left Viola, I don't know who anybody is. <laughs> now, I watched that for four days. I still just don't know who Vonda and Jen. I just gotta, know they're going to Geneva. You gotta stay with those things. But I got how hooked. long? I don't know. I got hooked on the game shows. I got hooked on the game shows. I've made jokes about them, you know, because I find some of them kind of silly. I got hooked, and I'm yelling, and I'm in bed with this thing, and I'm going, I know that, I know that. I can name that in two notes. <laughs> it's like, I'm not even getting paid. It's crazy. I, did a, I was going to write Paul Lynn a fan letter. He did a thing on Hollywood Squares. I fell, I started laughing so hard, I had to take this ridiculous looking thing off for a while because I was like this. Peter Marshall turns to Paul Lynn, and it was a quote by famous personalities. And Peter said, Paul, who was, what was, what great personality said, what a dump. And Paul said, Dumbo. <laughs> well, I went off of the edge of the bed, rolling around on the floor. The actual uh, answer to that is Betty Davis. Oh, Remember, course, she yes, says, I he says, Dumbo, and I went out. Oh, I like his answer better. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back after this. Stay where you are. Tom Snyder's here tonight. Call her with Kelly Gale. Oh, no. 
uh, back with Suzanne Clichette, Mrs. Thomas Gallagher. You know, I want to tell you something. Yeah. Uh, I talk about not going in the kitchen, but I really a very good cook. And I because there was really no interest. Your husband thinks that a great dinner is a cow, a loaf of bread, and some mirror. <laughs> Tommy is not. It does kind of put you off, you know. Tommy is mean? not gourmet. Oh is God, he? his idea of He's a great salad is canned pears with Miracle Whip on a thing of lettuce. <laughs> Took me, I think, five years. He let me sprinkle some paprika on it for color, and I mean, he tasted it the first time like I was trying. You know, he uh, he was in the will, and it yeah. was all over for him. So I don't enjoy cooking. We are longer like Tommy yeah. and I. Uh, because, I often uh, think you're the same person. Yes, because uh, to me, until I was 18, I'd either, I would go to the gourmet section to get Velveeta. <laughs> you know, I, I didn't know. I'm, I'm basically simple and stuff like that. I mean, he approached an artichoke for the first time. Like, I mean, he was, I think he took a pistol out and was going to shoot it. Because, you know, you never know if you get the meat from the top of the leaf or the bottom. <laughs> and I saw him, he was doing one of these jobs. But so now, he, looked, he likes it now. It only took about 10 years to I'm get I'm reluctant to try new things. Uh, there are certain things that the people who watch the show know that I will not tolerate under any conditions. And one of them is liver. Yes. And uh, the other is broccoli. Ah. I have not, <laughs> I have, it's just one of those things. So we all have our taste, but there is the, the chef has not been born who can disguise liver. <laughs> and I've been to a lot of restaurants where people say, look, you just haven't had it prepared the right way. <laughs> and uh, would, Joanna will take me to some uh, restaurant, you know, and the guy said, well, we do the Cincy bread crumbs with the olive and we place it inside of a pork chop, and then we lay on the sauce, and so when I bite in, I say, liver, <laughs> no way. Well, I also have a philosophy. I don't believe in eating anything I know personally. I mean, when they bring out a lobster that's alive, a whole person, it before. it's Irving. I have a relationship <laughs> with him. And the next thing I know, they bring it out. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it. I, I never can't. liked that either, where they bring a, your a lobster to the table. And I don't even like a raw hunk of meat that I could, you know, see a, a feature that I can relate to. I don't even want to, I don't want a chicken. I don't want to see it ever. You know? <laughs> I mean, the only thing left for me is a carrot that I'm not fond of. <laughs> you got to hang up. Now, tell them briefly what you were telling me, that you, this, the trip you had, <laughs> where... Because Tommy doesn't like to fly. He's, well, a, he's a white knuckle flyer. He admits it. Lots of people have that phobia. They just do not believe in flying. So you decided to take... We went train. on a trip. And uh, first of all, you know that if they run out of scotch, he siphons off gasoline. This is a man who has been known to follow people into the toilet who looks suspicious, a woman with a makeup bag that he insisted on inspecting. He has to get fairly well juiced uh -huh. before he will board an airplane. And being Irish is not sufficient, you know. I mean, <laughs> however, we got on one flight, and the stewardess looked at him and said, oh, no, I've flown with you before, and went right back to tour. She traded with another girl. <laughs> <laughs> but he didn't know, you know. He was off the ground for two seconds. And so we decided, rather than put him through this, we had to make connect a connecting flight, and there was no direct flight, so it meant up and down, up and down, up and down. And I said to him, all right, honey, let's take the train. We'll go to Chicago, and then we'll get a direct flight, okay? And I thought it'd be nice, we'd see the Dream. country. And you know, I grew up in New York and then moved here, and I've never seen the country. So it was exciting. And we'd get on the train, and it's lovely, and it's going to be a five-hour trip. And of course, he loves junk food, and we have a porter. Mr. Porter was our porter. And they have, you know, McDonald's burgers and hot yeah. dogs. I mean, the man, had such garlic was coming out of his pores. Even the donut had garlic <laughs> in it, you know. He was happy, I'm reading. And we get to a town, and all of a sudden, an alarm goes off, and the conductor goes running through the, the train. And I said, what's the matter? He said, it's a tornado warning. And I said, well, I mean, we're in a train. It's very heavy. Nothing can happen. He said, lady, look at that house over there. It's heavier than the train, and it was over on its side. Now I get hysterical. All I can think of is the Wizard of Oz. I'm going up in the air. <laughs> I'm going to get it in the air. Now I start to laugh, and the tears are coming. Mr. Porter, the porter, now is green. And this guy is running back. I used to be a fire chief. This is deadly. And I know that we're, it's over and out for us, death. We make it through. We get into Chicago. The car that's supposed to meet us is not there. We get in a cab. Now it's, there's a thunderstorm, a lightning, I told you. I mean, now I figure we're going to get it from the lightning. And the driver either just robbed a bank and it's a getaway car, or he's a kumikaze pilot. I don't know. But we look at each other, and I said, I don't know about you, I am not going up in a plane now because thunder is going to strike us dead. We are meant to get it today. We go back to Chicago, try and get into the hotel. You were on your staying. way to the airport. We were on our way to the airport. Uh, there was no way, I mean, a wing, a thing. And we now have no bags. We've sent them on ahead. So it's like, you know, 
happy couple checking into the hotel with no bags. No luggage. <laughs> and uh, we get into the room. Now, that's kind of exciting to me, but Tommy, you know how he's very conservative. When we call for room service, he opens the door and he is wearing his raincoat, <laughs> black socks, and loafers with tassels. <laughs> he looks like Uncle Sherman the Flash <laughs> when he's got the mustache. Uh, now the guy, the room service, you think they're hardened, you know, he uh, gets hysterical and all he wants to do is look around at the corner to see the broad that this guy is wearing. <laughs> a man in a raincoat with black socks. Now I am wearing my corkies. he has no robe, you mean? No robe, he had nothing, but what we were wearing, I'm wearing my corkies and my raincoat. Coat with the bun. <laughs> you know, I always like to be elegant. It was my Ava Gardner period. It was the most incredible trip. We finally could not get out, and the next day we had to leave in a, in a mild storm. What is so funny to me is after all of that business about flying, you get on the train finally, and a tornado, because if people have ever been in a tornado, it can take tracks, you know, and twist it up and, and bend it around poles. It's incredible. Yeah, it's amazing what nature can do. You know, also, another thing is they were fixing the tracks. So mm -hmm. trains could only go in one direction. So the bell was going the entire time we were there so that if a train were coming in the same direction, there was no place to swerve off. It was truly the greatest anxiety trip of my life. I will be very happy to get on the Concorde. Did you have your little uh, oh, I had sketch pad? Yeah. So well, you got I it said, all, you got it all you recorded. It. Yeah. I keep a, a journal of our trips and draw she does. all She's one things. of the most talented ladies. We spent some time in New York. And, um, and Joanne and I were in with you and Tommy. And she keeps not a diary as such, but she makes little observations and then sketches and very well. Thank you. Little figurines or whatever we're doing. Tommy and I were watching St. Patrick's Day Parade. <laughs> then she comes at the end of the trip and presents this where you girls would go shopping. Yeah. Well done. Very tasteful. When we went the to the gals were wearing it. When we went to New York, we had to pay for our tickets and you were there already and he's got the VIP treatment. Tommy gave him his suit bags. And I look and there's Johnny Carson walking through the airport holding my husband's suit bags. And we rode in the cart. You think in the car and I'm walking with your, with your dumb husband's suit. Well, he was crazy. He was getting All the way up. He was crazy. He gave me, he says, would you, would you take this? And I said, sure. <laughs> and he doesn't have one of those little um, <laughs> nylon things. No. He's got a garment bag made out of uh, leather, you know. <laughs> And his entire wardrobe. From oxen that were killed specifically for that purpose. <laughs> they were killed in oh, Texas. That's right. Hot damn honey, they're bigger and better. <laughs> that was I was also in Texas, you know. I finally met my in-laws after being with Tommy. A lot of Texans. Yes. Tommy and I have been together 12 years. We've and you've never met your... Never brother met my brother and sister-in-law because they don't fly either. <laughs> Runs in the family. There's a streak in there. And in I the went family. to Texas for the first time. And uh, they, they, took, um, they had a big lunch, and I met the remaining aunts and the cousins, and they were wonderful. But, you know, I was the apprehension very has be. nervous, very. I, well, you've met your in-laws. I mean, it's, t it's Several different. times. <laughs> <laughs> I have in-laws scattered all over the world. No, I know what you mean. It's always a little... Uh, and also, time. when they, you know, put out a feed, you eat whatever they put out, because you don't want to insult anybody, all you know. All except liver. Yeah. Yeah, that's a disclaimer. Let me do this. It's good to see you, and I'm glad you're us. Thank you, you. No, I'm your fine. I'm there. fine. Tom Snyder is with us tonight. Yeah, he's Tom is back in California, and he's going to be out in just a moment. So stay where you are.